God is that prayer is not uh, to prepare us for the battle alone. You know, prayer is not something that we we do to prepare us for life's battles. It's not to to get us ready and 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 get us uh, uh, prepared and and all um, in the right mindset for the battle of life. Prayer is actually where the battle is won. You know, the the, the battle is won on our knees. And uh, the closer we get to God, the more we depend upon him, the more we will uh, receive and response, a, a peace and a joy that only comes from him. And so it's just so wonderful that we can pray together and we can, we can talk about um, God together. Uh, we're going to the word of God tonight. Again, uh, we're looking at back at the book of Acts. We're looking at Acts tonight. We're looking at Acts chapter 22 the 22nd chapter of Acts, Acts chapter 22, and we're going to start our reading tonight at verse number, verse number 14. Acts chapter 22, and we're going to begin looking at verse number 14. God's word says in Acts 22, uh, 14, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. And he said, this is Paul telling a story about Jesus. And, and Jesus said, the God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one and to hear his voice. For you will be a witness for him every, uh, to everyone of what you have seen and heard. You for one more time, verse 14, I mean, verse 15, for you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen and heard. Being a witness is a very difficult thing. As a matter of fact, we, we have their books and books about how do I witness for God? How do I uh, talk to others about Jesus? But clearly we know that is what God has called us to do, to, to, to witness, to, to show who he is uh, through our lives and through our service. But what, how does that take place? Especially when vulnerability is such a big thing. One of the things, uh, we know we can do is to tell our story, even though it, our society encourages us to not be vulnerable. Our society encourages us to put forward the things that we're good at and, and, and to hide our, our, our broken parts, hide our, our issues. But one of the things we see in, in Paul is that God has led him to not just tell his good or not sell the, the, show the miracles, not just show the, the nice and pretty side, but to also look back in the past and say, no, I haven't always been great. I haven't always been, been, been amazing, but the God who I serve is, is amazing. And he is showing himself through me. Paul in our story today has been arrested. He has been arrested and he has been beaten all because of Jesus. It wasn't something that he did. He didn't do something that he shouldn't have done. He didn't uh, steal from somebody. He didn't lie to somebody. He didn't uh, physically hurt somebody, but he is being accosted because of his faithfulness to Christ. And it's amazing that when Paul is taken, Paul doesn't see his job as done. Paul doesn't see that his job, I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm, when the cuffs get slapped on my wrist, I, I, I may be, be tempted to say, okay, hallelujah, Lord, I, I served you all the way that I can. I, I've done all that I can do for you, but now I, I'm arrested. And now uh, you're going to have to do the rest yourself. But Paul had a mentality, no, I am going to serve God until the day that I die, until, until there's no more breath in my body. I don't care what situation I'm in. I don't care how, how physically I'm feeling. 
I'm going to serve God no matter what. And so Paul was very interested in telling his story, telling his story. And, 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 and so the, the, look at the different elements of, of the story that, that, that Paul talks about. First, first we see or in, in the beginning of chapter uh, 22, we see the first, first thing we see is that Paul, he's, he's addressing people in the language that they understand. Notice he's not speaking, he's not saying, well, I'm going to, I'm going to stand above you and I'm better than you. So I'm going to talk to you however I feel like. No, he's recognizing the call to be all things to all people so that somebody might see Jesus in him. And so he's speaking in the Hebrew language because he knows that the language that they're going to understand. And he knows that he, he, he wants some kind of affinity with people. When we share our story, when we tell people what God has done through us, we can't speak from a high position. We can't talk down to people. We Instead, God, God as the old adage is, the, 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 the ground at the cross is level. At the foot of the cross is, is nothing but level. We all sinners saved by grace. That's the best we can be a sinner saved by grace. He wasn't putting himself above anybody. He spoke to them at, uh, and addressed them at the level they spoke. He wanted to, if you wanted for them to be able to hear what he had to say. And, 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 and God is calling us to do the same thing when we talk to others about who he is. And uh, the other thing is uh, Paul in his, in his address to the people, he's telling his story, remember. He makes sure that he doesn't sanitize the bad parts. He doesn't cut out the bad parts and say, I'm going to jump right to the conversion. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the Damascus Road. No, oh, no, no. He talks about how he said, I, I, I in verse four of, of chapter 22, he says, I persecuted the way to death. I'm a murderer. I, 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 that's who I am. I, I, I have my hands are bloody. I, 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 I've done this stuff. I, I, I have been a murderer. I have killed for, for in the name of the Lord, even though that wasn't what God intended for me to do. I, I am a murderer. See, so many times we, when we tell in our story, we cut out all, you know, the, the things that we, we afraid people are going to look, oh man, I can't believe you smoked some weed in your life. I can't believe you had, had a beer one day. I can't believe you used to steal. I can't believe you had pr premarital sex. I can't believe all of these different situations about you. We're afraid people are going to see our, our, our flaws. And, and, and so we don't tell people really what God has delivered us from. But what happens is when we don't tell everything God delivered us from, we, we, we water down our salvation. We make it seem like grace was just basically already there. We were already living a good life. And, and God just kind of didn't really have to do too much to save us. He just kind of just did a little bit and he saved us. I, I was already good. And, and, and that makes the story very difficult for some people who are struggling. You know, some, some people, as, as, as someone was praying about addiction and talking about addictions earlier, addictions are hard. And, 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 and that's the easiest way for people to say, well, I, I, if, if you haven't been through anything, I, I can't hear your story because you haven't been through what I've been through. But there are people who God wants to hear your story unadulterated, unadded, unsubtracted from so that others can say, oh, wow, look what God has done through you. And if he did it through you, he can do it to me. We, it, when we sanitize our story, people cannot identify with us. They, 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 they seem like they, they begin to believe that we are all, we've already been perfect. And, and perfection is, is not something that we have. We know the, the, the struggle that we've been going on. We know what's going on in our lives. And we know, hopefully, hopefully we know that if with just a few moments without God, we'd be right back where we started. We, just a few moments without the Lord on our side, we'd be right back to, to wherever situation God res rescued us from. And, and, and so our dependence is totally on, on Jesus to, well, from moment to moment. And so we should, we should display that. We should let people know, oh, no, it's not because of me that any good has come from me. It's only because of the grace of God. He didn't, he didn't sanitize it. He, he, he was relatable. He says, look, all of these things that you went through, I went through too. We, uh, all of these situations that you go through, I want to, I, my whole thing is to win you to Christ. He took it very seriously. 
to, to be an example for Jesus. But notice what happens when we are, when we tell the story, true story. I mean, well, I don't got to get crazy with it. But when we tell the true story for Jesus, it not only encourages others, but it encourages us. We remember afresh what God has done. How often do we go down memory lane and remember just how bad things were? Because just how, you know, you know when we keep telling the story, sometimes when a few years pass, sometimes it, it, it kind of changes a little bit. You know, sometimes it, it, it kind of makes us, makes us forget about just, oh, yeah, we, I was laying in that gutter one day. Oh, yeah, I was uh, sit, sitting beside that toilet one day. Oh, yeah, I, I was in, in, a, in a hard and bad situation. And God reached down his gracious hands and pulled me up out of that. It, it reminds us of where we, we have come from. And so, so we stay, we, we can't boast. There's no reason to boast about anything. We know we can't boast about anything. And it encourages us and our strength in God, knowing that he who did that thing for us will continue to not only do it for others, but continue to do it in our lives. The Holy Spirit is a powerful, ever uh, always performing uh, uh, force within our lives. And he wants to continue to impart more grace every single day to us. He wants us to remember what he's done for us. Sometimes, even, even in Paul's situation, Paul didn't really feel like a lot of people were going to hear him in that situation. I mean, very rarely do people come from a from, from from literally beating you, from grabbing you, from from accosting you, and in a few moments, uh, now they're saying, "Oh, I, I want whatever you have." That, that, he didn't really think that necessarily that was going to happen. I'm sure some people, uh, as a result of, of his witness, somebody somebody heard Jesus. But but when we when we witness for Christ, we in, we we solidify ourselves in Christ. We put ourselves deeper into him. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it keeps it keeps us from sliding over. Uh, uh, one, one person, I, I was hearing a preacher talk one day, he, was, he, he wrote a book and he was talking in the book about how, you know, he a lot of times he preaches sermons just to preach the sermon for himself because he knows no one may not, not hear it. But the more he preaches, the more he encourages himself and, and the more he remembers the side he's on. And, and, and I feel like that's what God has called us to do, not just for others, and it is for others, but the more we encourage others, the more we encourage ourselves. And I want to challenge you. I want to challenge each and every person who's listening to me tonight to tell your story. Ask God how you can tell your story to, to, to witness truly for the one who saved you, the one who left heaven for you and me the one who, who pulled you out of that situation, the one who says there's no condemnation for you, the one who, who, who is loving you with an everlasting love, the one who has a purpose and a, and a, a position for you in this life, the one who's trying to give you life abundantly. I, I, I challenge us to, to, to ask God to give us a succinct, succinct story so that the world can see who we are, not that we're ashamed or vulnerable or, or we're afraid people are going to be see some, think some type of way about us, but we don't care because the more, the, the crazier they think we were, the higher they think Jesus is, you know, the, the, the crazier, the lower we are, the higher Jesus is, the less we've done, the more Christ has done in us. And so Jesus is glorified even in the midst of our situations. Father God, thank you so much for what you have done for us. You have been amazing to us. We are all thinking about the road that you've taken us down, the journey that you, you brought us across. And, and, and then you, you took us to a, a Damascus Road experience, a situation where, where you revealed yourself to us. Thank you so much for that. Now, Lord, may we not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. May we not be afraid to tell what you actually did in our lives. Uh, may, may we be, be obedient and, and, and aggressive in serving you and letting others know just who you are. We, people can argue about a lot of things, but they cannot argue about the story and the journey that you've taken us on. Give us the courage. Give us the strength. Fill us with your spirit so that we'll continue to be encouraged as well as others as we walk down this journey with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Thank you, Pastor. I want to thank you because.